Southwest 3216 only runway 24 right to line. Hello everybody, welcome to Pilot Edge. This video is going to demonstrate how to install Pilot Edge into FSX or Lockheed Martins prepared. The first step will be to navigate to pilotedge.net, make sure you're logged into your account, and visit the Pilot Center. Select Download Software, and you'll find the download button under Prepared, FSX, and FSX Steam Edition. This video is intended for those of you who are visual learners. These same steps can also be accomplished by reading and following the instructions on the download page of the website. Even after watching this video, I'd recommend visiting the download page that you see here and reading over it just to make sure you didn't miss anything. At the top, you'll find which simulator versions are supported by Pilot Edge. If you have the DVD version of Microsoft Flight Simulator 10 or FSX, you need Service Pack 1 and 2 installed or the Acceleration Expansion Pack. If you're using the Steam version of FSX, you'll get those updates automatically, so you don't need to worry about that. Your first step is to download the Pilot Edge client. Select the link and the download will begin automatically. Windows or third-party antivirus software might display a box similar to this before the download begins. This is only because Windows and the antivirus software do not recognize Pilot Edge, but we can assure you that nothing here is going to hurt your computer. If you get a box that looks like this, select More Info, and then click on Run Anyway. If your third-party antivirus software is the thing blocking the download, you may need to temporarily disable your antivirus in order to get the download to begin or just figure out a way to override it. After the download is complete, select the downloaded file to begin the installation. Select your shortcuts as desired. Next, you can use the Browse button to select where you want to install the client. Once you have your destination folder set up, click Install. The installation is quick, and now we can finish and launch Pilot Edge. If it's your first time using the client, expect a few of these pop-ups to appear. Simply click through them, and the client will walk you through the setup process. In these two boxes, enter in your email address and password that you used to log into the Pilot Edge website. Once those have been entered, select Apply. The client will ask you to select an input device. This is going to be the microphone in which you talk to air traffic control. We highly recommend using a computer headset or some sort of external microphone, something other than your computer's built-in webcam microphone. Select OK and then navigate to the microphone device to select whichever microphone you want to use. Next, you're going to select your headset device for your output. That is wherever you want to hear your radios coming out of. I'm going to select my default USB audio device, which happens to be my headset. We'll leave the volume slider at 50% right now. We can always come back to it later. Next, hit apply, and the client will ask you to configure your push to talk button. You can set this as either a button on your joystick or yoke, or a keyboard button. When you're ready, select set new push to talk key or button. After clicking the button, the very next key that you press or click will be your push to talk. I'm going to select a button on my joystick. Once you've selected your key or button, click apply. One important note on the download software page is that if you are using a key on your keyboard rather than a button on your yoke or joystick, make sure you always run the pilot client as an administrator. If you're unsure of how to do that, we'll go over it later on. We're done with the startup settings, so let's click OK. Depending on your level of firewall settings, you may get a notification from Windows that looks similar to this one. All this is telling you is that your computer is trying to communicate with Pilot Edge. You can select both boxes here and then select Allow Access. As this happens, another web page will pop up automatically. Now you're ready to connect to Pilot Edge. First, you want to make sure you have P3D or FSX up and running. Select your aircraft and a location. I've selected Sunnyside Municipal, which is the location of our suggested first flight on the network. One very important thing to remember is to never connect on an active taxiway or runway. To ensure this, we can select the Change button on the airport and double check where we're going to be starting by the Choose Runway and Starting Position. Here you can select where you want to start. Any of these parking spots are perfectly fine, just as long as it's not an active runway or one of the runway numbers. We'll select Parking 1. You may use real world weather or your own custom defined weather, and the time and season is up to you as well. Now let's load up your flight. I've loaded up into a windowed view rather than full screen just to make the setup process a little bit easier for us, but feel free to fly in full screen or windowed, whichever you prefer. Now that our simulator is up and running, we want to make sure the Pilot Edge client is still running. We can verify this by checking our system tray. In the lower right hand side of your screen, you can view what's running in the background by selecting this arrow and looking for the Pilot Edge pilot client, identified by this blue circle. It's already running for us here due to the setup process that we went through a few minutes ago. However, if you're returning after having set up another time, you'll need to launch the Pilot Edge client from wherever you decided to install it earlier. You'll find it in a folder labeled Pilot Client. Select that, and then once again select Pilot Edge Pilot Client. I'd recommend making a desktop shortcut of this if you didn't already, just to make it quicker in the future. 
Remember, if you selected a key on your keyboard as your push to talk earlier, you'll need to right click the Pilot Edge Pilot Client and run it as an administrator. Once you've made sure the Pilot Edge Client is running, let's double check to make sure that we're at a ramp and not on an active taxiway or runway. Now we're ready to connect to Pilot Edge. You're going to need to go back to that web page that came up earlier on its own. If you've lost it, you can go back to your system tray in the lower right, right click on the Pilot Edge Client, and select Launch Web Interface. That will bring up a brand new web interface for you. Another important thing to note is that simply launching the Pilot Edge Pilot Client, whether it be through your desktop shortcut or your program files, is not going to actually launch anything in front of you. Remember, the client launches to your system tray in the lower right. So always check there if you can't find the client. Here we're going to fill in our call sign, our aircraft ICAO code, our airline code if we have one, and our livery code if we have one. You may select a call sign based on the registration of the aircraft, for instance, November 211 Papa Echo, or an air carrier, for instance, American 123. I'm going to put in my N number. Foreign registration numbers are also allowed on the network. However, do not include any dashes in this call sign field. Your type code is the ICAO code of your aircraft. I'm flying a Cessna 172. A helpful link to determine your aircraft's ICAO code can be found under step 3 of the download software page. Next, the airline code and livery determines what other airplanes will see you as. Check out the website for more information on those fields, but they're not required, so today we're just going to go ahead and connect. You'll notice a successful connection will have your call sign, your aircraft type, and it'll say logged into the network at the very bottom. While we're here, take a look at the other three buttons as well. P3D and FSX don't have a way to standardize how the mode C setting is conveyed to the network. As a result, you need to do this through your client rather than the actual airplane. Select the mode C button shortly after connecting. This will make it so you don't have to do it later. Doing so will tell the network that your aircraft is squawking mode C or altitude, that is turning your transponder to the altitude mode. Next to that button is the ident. If the controller ever asks you to ident, you need to select this button within the client. Finally, the flight plan provides you with a quick link to file your flight plan through the Pilot Edge website. You may also access the flight plan filing through the website itself. Congratulations, you're now connected to Pilot Edge. But if you're a first time user, we still have a few more configuration settings to go through before we're ready to go. Back into the simulator, you're gonna to navigate to your general settings. Pilot Edge has its own ADA system, which reflects the runways in use at each tower and airport. Because of this, we need to disable the in-game ATIS in order to hear Pilot Edge's ATIS. Under Air Traffic Control, uncheck Show Message Log. Select OK and navigate to your sound settings. You need to completely disable the in-game voice. Next, select OK. Finally, navigate to your display settings. Select the Traffic tab at the top and remove all of your airline and general aviation traffic. We do this because Pilot Edge already injects all the traffic you're going to need to see. You don't want your own traffic interfering with that. Next, hit OK. Now that all of your settings are configured properly, and you're connected to the Pilot Edge network, let's just make sure your audio is working before your first flight. Pilot Edge allows you to do a self-radio check on 123.45 by creating a loopback feature that will allow you to hear yourself when you transmit. This isn't an ATC frequency, so controllers won't hear you and you're free to do as many self-radio checks on 123.45 as you need. The self-radio check will come right back through into your headphones to make sure the audio is to your liking. To do this, tune 123.45 and set it to your active on COM1. Do the same on COM2. 123.45 on active COM1 and COM2. Next, activate both COM1 and COM2. In the default Skyhawk, that's done by selecting the both button. Next, hold down the push to talk that you said earlier in the pilot client and do a radio check. Radio, radio check. check, one, two, three. Radio, radio check, check. One, two, three. You should hear your voice come back to you with a little bit of a radio effect through whatever audio device you selected earlier. If you do not hear yourself, double check you have your push to talk set properly within the pilot client. Check for any physical mute buttons on your headset and microphone. Do the same for your audio output device. And lastly, double check you have the correct microphone and speaker selected. And that's it. You're ready to go flying and experience all the potential that the Pilot Edge network has to offer. Remember that if you ever need to change anything that's Pilot Edge related, such as your input device, your output sound device, your push to talk, that will all be done under the Pilot Client, which can be found in the lower right side of your screen in the Windows taskbar. Simply right click that and you can navigate to settings from there. If you'd like any further technical support, or if you'd like to engage with our community of thousands of Pilot Edge users, stop by our Discord chat server. 
Be sure to follow Pilot Edge on all social media to stay up to date on the latest and greatest. Enjoy your flight, Captain.